All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here. And uh, welcome to BayWorks Administrative Professionals webinar. Uh, yesterday was Administrative Professionals Day. So we want to honor all the administrative professionals in the water and wastewater industry and tell you a happy Administrative Professionals Day. And we're glad you're with us. Uh, my name is Robert Scott, and I'm the president of BayWork as well as the Technical Training Program Administrator at Valley Water. I will be your moderator for today and my colleague Chad Thigpen, Thigpen will be the technical producer. Some of you may not be very familiar with Baywork, so I'd like to say a little bit about who we are. We are a consortium of over 40 water and wastewater agencies in the Bay Area and beyond. We believe operational reliability is achieved through workforce reliability. And therefore, we make it our business to focus on strengthening the present and future workforce. Some of the ways we do that is to hold events like this one and other events that allows water professionals to see, hear, and touch the great things that are happening at our agencies. Uh, the recording of this webinar will be posted on our website, baywork.org, soon. Please visit our website and our social media accounts and learn more about our activities. We really want to engage with you today. So please, I'm gonna share my screen here. Give me a moment. So please, uh, we wanna engage with you today. So please use the chat feature to share your thoughts. Um, there's an icon at the bottom of your screen labeled chat. I'm sure by now you've used this feature before. In fact, right now, we would like all of you to type to the, type into the chat your name, organization, and job title. And let me make sure I think you are able to do so. Let's see if we get some responses. Your name, organization, and job title. If you can just type that into the chat, we appreciate it. Oh, okay. You, I mean, get, let me allow your respond ability to do that. Sorry about that. I think you should have it now. There we go. Great. Your name, job, title, and organization to the chat. We want to know who's in the room today. And also, there's uh, another icon. and it's the Q&A. Please use it to ask any questions you may have. We will be monitoring both fields and will address as many of your comments and questions as time allows. Near the end of this session, we will post a very brief survey link into the chat. We will also send you the survey via email. It helps us plan for uh, future events and just to encourage you a little bit more to complete uh, the survey, we have some prizes to raffle off. And um, these the physical prizes will be sent to the address of the winner's, winner's choice. So whoever wins, we'll, we're not going to indicate who's the winner today, uh, but we will contact you and look and ask for your the address that you want to send them to. And then there's uh, also another prize, which is a virtual prize, where you can attend a conference. So we'll be giving these out to 10 of you um, who completes the survey. And But we'd like to get surveys from you all. Today, we're very happy to have with us um, our panelists. And we have three senior admin professionals along with uh, senior leaders they support. And I will allow them to introduce themselves very shortly. But please know we will be asking them a set of questions about their strategic partnerships, um, their effective communication and efficient processes, and regarding their day-to-day -day work. Again, please feel free to participate through the chat and the Q&A. And without any further ado, I will allow the plan panelists to introduce themselves and we'll get started with Jimmy. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me here today. My name is Jimmy Dang. I am the general manager here at Oroloma Sanitary District. 
I've been here going on uh, over 12 years now. I've come up the engineering route. And again, happy to be here. Fun fact about me, I'm a fairly young family. I have a six-year-old son, four-year-old daughter. So that's my second job away from this job. And uh, if I have any extra time out of that, I do like to go to the racetrack with my sports car. So a little fun fact. Thank you. All right, Patricia. Good morning. My name is Patricia Schofield. I am also with Oraloma Sanitary District in San Lorenzo. And I have been with the district as an employee for 10 years uh, this June. And I did two years uh, as a kind of a part-time internship um, for two years as well. So around 12 years for me as well at the district. Uh, fun fact about me, I'm seven weeks away from my having my third baby and I'm going to have three under three. So, um, I'm a busy lady, but busy is good. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on for me. Thank you. Thanks, Patricia. Valerie. Good morning. Uh, thank you for having me here. My name is Valerie Pryor. I am the general manager at the Zone 7 Water Agency. And a fun fact about me is I was not always in water and I actually was in transportation before I made the switch. All right, Donna. Good morning. My name is Donna Fabian. I'm the executive assistant to the general manager, which happens to be Valerie Pryor. Um, and I'm also secretary to the board of directors. We have seven board members. Um, been with Zone 7 Water Agency for 13 years, um, but in total Alameda County, over 30. Um, and fun fact about me is I am somewhat of a car enthusiast. And um, I'm currently on my 18th car right now. Oh, wow. Thank you, Donna. All right, Aaron. All right. Uh, good morning, and uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm Aaron Baker. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the Water Utility Enterprise for Valley Water. Uh, at Valley Water, we provide uh, safe, clean water to Santa Clara County. I've been with Valley Water for 23 years, maybe even a little more if you count the interns I ship I had before that. Um, I've been about two and a half years in my current role. Uh, my fun fact, I wish I had more race car experience and other things like that. I, I guess I got to get some better things. I've, uh, I personally walked through almost all of Valley Water's large diameter pipelines. Oh, and I'm double jointed. <laughs> all right, Aaron. All right, Debbie. <laughs> I'm totally impressed. I'm Debbie Britt Petty. I'm the executive assistant to Chief Operating Officer uh, Aaron Baker here at Valley Water. Um, I've been here actually just almost one year, so I'm pretty new, um, but I have been um, an administrative professional for approximately 23 years. Um, Fun fact, I do like to drive fast cars if I'm able to, but I don't have a collection, <laughs> um, but I do, um, I rescue senior, senior needs, special needs dogs. So that's a fun fact about me. Oh, Thanks for great. having me. Thanks everyone for sharing. Well, we're going to dive in and get into our questions and, um, and we appreciate you guys being here. All right, here's the first question. And this one will be directed to Valerie. As a senior leader, what skills and, uh, and qualities in a senior admin assistant are helpful to you? Well, I, I think certainly having all the skills to be an admin assistant um, are helpful to me and, and being efficient about doing that, but really good customer service, uh, not just to me, but to the board and, and other areas of our department and then follow through. Um, I think follow through is, is one of the key assistants. And of course, Donna is great at the follow through. And, and I might wanna say also about you know Donna's role at Zone 7, she is my executive assistant and she's also the, the board you know clerk or secretary, but she also supervises um, admin support staff that support the entire agency. So not just supporting me, but everyone with like contracts and office management. So um, good customer service and follow through, I think are some of the key skills. All right, thank you, Valerie. Aaron. All right, uh, yeah, 
uh, Valerie uh, hit some some really good points there. I'll, I'll add a couple more. Uh, I think uh, kind of like a, uh, I guess you could call it anticipatory or no surprises. I think one of the other things is is being able to kind of look uh, and understand uh, above and below, uh, you know, me where um, how to keep me informed and 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 keep or keep keep a, a manager informed and and understand things that are on the horizon. Uh, I think the other one is is uh, prioritization skills or skills being able to clearly communicate, um, you know, how think what is a priority to me and to others and and how we can work together to to move through those things. And then uh, clear communication, uh, I think that's another one. Um, uh, being able to develop uh, good communication skills with uh, um, not only me but the uh, the uh, executive leadership team around me, so that they can understand and and she can help. Um, you know, if I uh, uh, put uh, direction out that I have to others. So, all right, thanks, Aaron. Jimmy. Yes. Uh, just to add on top of that list, uh, having an open communicator, someone that's willing to deliver the news, whether it's good or bad, but also if it's on the bad side, have some type of proposed solution to help us get out of a jam. Um, being responsive, you know, when there's items that need to take place between Patricia and I, she's always uh, very responsive. And most important, one of the important factors, I believe, is just having a really positive attitude towards not only the job, but your peers, your staff, and uh, lastly, being organized, because as all of you know, there is a lot going on every day and um, being organized is an extremely helpful skill. All right, thanks, Jimmy. All right, we're gonna reverse the question now and um, ask, we're gonna reverse it and ask, as a senior admin assistant, what skills and qualities in a senior leader are helpful to you? And we'll start with Donna. Hi, thanks. Um, I think that the ability to switch gears at any moment um, is important, not able uh, so that you're not going to lose focus when you get back to something else, being able to just manage multiple things going on. Um, being resourceful uh, is a big plus, um, being dependable, and um, being able to delegate also and um, cross train your staff so that they can back each other up and back you up if needed. All right, thank you, Donna. Debbie? <laughs> um, yes, uh, the obvious again, good communication um, and, and kind of mirroring Aaron. I always appreciate his heads up when he knows of conferences or different events or things coming up or hot items that I should be aware of because it helps me plan ahead and keep his calendar ready and open um, and plan around that. Um, I think one of the most important qualities for me is also developing a trusting relationship with each other so that um, it helps me understand how I can help him work more efficiently. And it, it just sets a good tone in the office. And also, you know, when we have each other's back, it, it just makes a good team. Um, and finally, I think, <laughs> which is also important, is, is to have a little bit of a sense of humor because it helps cut through those stressful days. Um, but those are the things that I find helpful. All right. Thank you for that. Patricia. Uh, yeah, just to add on to that, um, I definitely have always had the huge luck of having general managers. Jimmy is the second general manager that I've uh, been an assistant for at the district. Just approachability, um, an open door policy, open communication at all times. Um, the other thing that I definitely appreciate is he holds all of us accountable, um, whether it's management, staff, he he holds us accountable um, in a very supportive way. Um, and the other thing is that he's very open to ideas and, you know, uh, collaboration on things. Um, you know, uh, our board changes a lot, you know, with each election, we've kind of had new um, new people on the board. And so you really do need to be able to switch gears and tailor to the needs of the board that you're serving. Um, and it's so helpful when your general manager is willing to collaborate and to approach that as a team. Uh, so those are the things that 
are really helpful to me as a as an assistant. All right, thank you. Okay, we're gonna ask our next question. And so how would you describe the way the two of you work together to achieve your organizational goals? And we'll start with you, Aaron. All right, well, uh, first, hopefully it's halfway fun. <laughs> <laughs> I know we got a lot of lot going on, but uh, you know, at least uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, we uh, we're very busy, and I think that uh, being able to work together even under pressure um, is 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 very is very helpful. Um, and 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 I guess to that, it's it's calendar and time management. I think is one of the biggest uh, biggest things that we've developed. Uh, you know, something to work on. You know, understanding the priorities for my time. Uh, you know, understanding, I guess, for better or worse, which meetings are important, which ones aren't, which ones we need to move. Um, who can uh, who can sneak in and wait in my office, and who, <laughs> you know, who who should uh, uh, take another time. So I think that th those types of things are are very very good, and it, it allows me to focus. Right? If if um, if uh, Debbie's taking care of a lot of the uh, background noise, I can I can really work to you know try to keep the water flowing, and uh, I guess keep my bosses happy. Um, and I think the other part is 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 as, as I mentioned before. Um, uh, I think it's been very good. She lets me know when things are brewing or or important things I should be aware of, uh, both above and below me. Uh, I think the idea of working with the other uh, admins, working with the other executive leadership team, and, and understanding and, and trying to keep me informed, um, even little through little snippets or, or other things like that, to minimize the surprises or let me know if I should let somebody above me know uh, what's going on. And I think that that's a you know, it takes time to kind of develop those, but I think that that's that's a good good key part of of what uh, what keeps us uh, working together and keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> that's great. All right, Debbie, I know you 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 have some comments too. So Debbie, <laughs> well, it's I, I actually you know when I looked at this question, I'm it's we're we're kind of bouncing the same idea off of each other. I think it's a good give and take there where um, <clears throat> he he. Aaron does the same thing for me. He kind of keeps me appraised of things he can see coming down the line. And I think that when he does that for me, it helps me to help him. I'm able to make that space for him and make that time, work things around it. Um, and I think that just, yeah, time management is key in this particular role. Just there's, we're going and Aaron's back to back, barely coming up for air sometimes. So um, I like to make sure he has time in his calendar to to at least eat or breathe a little bit when it, when possible. Um, so yeah, I, I think I think we've got a kind of a good thing. Um, and since I've only been here a year, it's um, it, I've seen that develop, and I think we have a really nice thing going right now. All right, that's great. All right, let's move to Jimmy. Yes, I, I guess. The best way to answer this question is that we work fantastic together. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I think anything short of that, you know, would would be challenging. So, yeah, um, you know, Patricia and I have a really open communication channel to one another at all times of the day. You know, we're smaller agencies, so that does lend itself to uh, more availability to one another. For offices, we're sharing a wall, literally. So... <laughs> uh, but having that open communication channel, uh, we're both very responsive to one another. So I try, I think we both try to not be the silo or the bottleneck uh, behind any tasks or anything that has to be taken care of. And then lastly, we're both very dedicated to our job. So that alignment in that, uh, that goal and that trait really does help with our relationship or working relationship with one another and trying to stay on top of the needs of the organization. All right, thanks for that, Jimmy. All right, Patricia. Yeah, to add to that, I definitely, like I said, I've lucked out with the general managers I've had so far, um, just having a great working relationship. And um, Jimmy and I both kind of work best when we can, when something comes up, uh, getting it done or getting it taken care of as soon as possible. So the faster we can get it off our plate, um, in a with a job well done and you know definitely not to, to rush things just to say oh I checked this off my list I can move forward uh, but we're both dedicated to problem solving and problem solving quickly because you are juggling so much um, in admin and like he touched on we're a very small staff uh, our admin staff is about five people and we all wear a lot of hats and so um 
we definitely prioritize well together. Obviously the, our board is our priority and um, there are small things that I can do as a service to the board that wins us brownie points as an admin team. So the more I can do for them and just uh, looking out for them, assisting in any way, making myself available to them at all times, um, that definitely curries favor for, for me, but also for, for Jimmy, um, cause I'm not able to really touch on the big high level things. Uh, that's not my place nor my role. Um, but just small things that I can do for the board that even puts them in a good mood as they're coming into a meeting that goes a long way, especially for the general manager. Um, so yeah, that's the way we work together. Very open, very dedicated, um, both to the rest of staff, making sure their needs are met, or if an issue comes up that we're, you know, giving the time and attention to that. And then obviously for the board as well, that's a huge priority for us. Um, and we're both very dedicated to keeping our board as happy as possible, which, you know, can be challenging, but uh, important. Yeah, that's great. All right, Valerie. Well, let's see. How do Don and I work together? I think we both have a, a, a tendency towards efficiency and organization. Um, so I think that helps. I think we have a similar uh, desire to be that way. And so we do communicate and we communicate frequently, but sometimes if it's crunch time in a hurry, you know, it's very efficient, you know, like please schedule a meeting. Um, but we do, when we have a chance, take the time to, you know, spend a little bit more time together. Um, I'll ask about, you know, you know, Donna's kids, uh, sometimes we'll take the time to just kind of laugh about some of the things going on. So I, I think we have a, a good groove there between, you know, when it's short and to the point and when to, you know, relax and, you know, be able to appreciate, uh, appreciate each other. Um, so I think that works well. Um, there's so much go going on in the day to day, uh, which we tend to focus on, but we do take the opportunity to, you know, sometimes talk about the future. Where do we want to be in three months or six months? So I guess it's a mix, and, you know, and I guess through working together, you develop that relationship. So when you know it's OK to be shortened to the point and when you know it's it's good to take the time to have more of a conversational approach. Um, and yeah, Donna's really organized. And so she keeps me organized and keeps us, you know, trying to keep zone seven organized. That's great. All right, Donna. Um, okay. Yeah, I was, that's kind of in my uh, notes of things to say is that both uh, Valerie and I are very organized and um, almost some, kind of like perfectionists when it comes to our work and our work product. We want to just be able to do something once and do it right and be done with it. Um, like Valerie said, we, um, we're, we're really busy here. We have um, a lot going on. So sometimes it's just real short emails or quick call, quick text about something that needs to happen. Um, and then when we do get a chance to just sit down and, and just have a real conversation, we do that as well. But it's it's usually quick to the point, efficient, get your work done. That's about it. Thanks, Donna. It's, it seems to me that each relationship is unique in and of itself. Would you guys agree with that? All right. All right. I want to pause for a moment here because some of you have came in um, after we had announced this, but I wanna invite you to use the Q&A um, feature and also would like you, if you're in attendance, to type your name, organization, and your job title into the chat so we can know who's in the room. Thanks for being with us. We'll move to the next question now. Oh, I, I wanna tell you also um, uh, and ask, do you wanna be, a part of our administrative professional work group that we're gonna be starting. If so, then please type into the chat what you see there on the screen, APWG, Administrative Professional Work Group. We're gonna be starting because we think the administrative uh, professionals do a, a tremendous job, an important job, and we wanna be form something that's gonna help encourage them. So type that into the chat as well. Question five, 
How would you describe your leader's communication style? And we'll start with Patricia. So uh, Jimmy's communication style is direct and to the point. Uh, it's super approachable and open. Um, he gives very clear direction, uh, which is obviously very helpful. So you're not having to, to second guess uh, what it is you're supposed to be doing. Uh, he always provides very clear expectations and deadlines, um, which is also very helpful when you are prioritizing a lot of different things um, and you need to know how important is this and when do I need to, do I need to drop everything and do it? Um, and he, it's also kind of a no appointments needed. So if I have a quick question, I either walk over two feet and ask him or pick up the phone and get that question answered. Um, but I am fortunate to not have to schedule time. He just, if I, if I need him uh, to answer something for me, he's makes himself available um, to get that done. Okay, thank you. I got a question for you. I just thought of this. Since you guys share a wall, do you like wall tap sometimes? Just just knock on the wall? <laughs> Have you done that? Not yet. <laughs> uh, I haven't had to, but um no, not 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 just yet. But if you hear a banging in the background of Jimmy's Q and A, that's <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Donna, how will you answer this question? Um, very similar to Patricia, actually. Uh, Valerie's communication style is very efficient and to the point. Um, however, she, you know, is thorough with her instructions. Um, she does not give unrealistic deadlines, um, which is great. And she lets you take a task and make it yours without hovering and, and giving her input on it. Um, she's not a helicopter manager, leader, if you will. Um, and she's also a good coach and has um, good advice for things um, that may come up. She's um, very well experienced in her job and has good advice in terms of that. So, yeah. Thanks, Donna. Debbie. All right. Um, Aaron also is very clear and to the point, you know, he's he's got a good style there. Um, although if I need clarification, he's very approachable, patient, and will take time to explain. Um, I also appreciate something about Aaron. Um, when we're tackling like a project, he will take the time to give me the bigger picture so I can understand how my piece or my, you know, my role will fit in. And, and that helps me kind of work better when I know what, what our goal is. Um, uh, our communication style is usually written um, through email. We watch for each other just because he's in meetings so much. Or like um, like my my other counterpart said that, you know, I can stop in anytime I want. He he will listen anytime. And I, I do appreciate that. Um, yeah, we, we do a lot of face-to-face. -face. We'll catch up with each other. And Aaron is very personable, which I, I really appreciate as well. We will, you know, not just talk about work. We can, you know, talk about the, the dogs or the kids' <laughs> soccer and all those things too, but, um, but definitely get the work done as well. All right. Thanks, Debbie. All right. Now, Next question, uh, how would you describe your admin's communication style? And we'll start with you, Jimmy. Yeah, I touched on some of these earlier for success. Um, she's very open and positive is a big deal for me. You know, it's always, I think some of you touched on that today, just having a sense of humor and trying to get, you know, get through the day. So having someone who's positive does help with, uh, with that. Uh, she's very proactive. She is looking forward, you know, she hears, if there's anything that's of concern, she'll definitely let me know. That way I can be aware or be ready to deal with any situation that could come up. And um, always just looking to do the right thing. And, and, and for the most part, just willing to help, always willing to offer, always offering help. Hey, how can I help you? How can we uh, tackle this certain thing more efficiently or quicker or get ahead of it? So that's, that's in a nutshell, her communication um, style. All right, thanks, Jimmy. Valerie. I think we're all going to uh, echo some of the same themes. I, I think this, these are the themes that make us successful in our jobs. 
Um, but yeah, Donna's communication style, it, it, it's efficient. Um, you know, a lot of simple emails and a lot of simple texts. Um, it's about getting the job done and communicating information as, you know, efficiently as possible. But then, you know, um, also being, you know, taking the time to be conversational when you need to. She'll give me a heads up about things. She'll say like, hey, this is something that we need to think about. Um, so very supportive as well. Um, and, you know, just echoing everything everyone says, you know, we're, we're partners. So it's about getting the work done and being efficient, but also knowing when to laugh and when to cry, right? <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. That sounds great. Uh, all right, Aaron. Okay. Well, yeah, I think uh, I think we've uh, definitely efficient, and I think most of y'all have, have talked about that. Um, and I think that you know, I mean, as you can imagine, it's it's actually saying that that uh, communication is efficient, and actually being able to know which board agenda memo is ho is hot, which signature is needed. Um, here at uh, Valley Water, we have a, a myriad of systems we use to approve and move things around, and so it's it's. Uh, it's excellent that she is able to, um, you know, figure out, uh, you know, what what is what is my priority, where we need to go, and, and what that is. Um, and then I think as as others had mentioned, um, ready to take anything on, right? Uh, and always, you know, staying positive, uh, even when I've had a you know a meeting that didn't go so well or other things like that. She's she's you know, what do we do next, Aaron, or how do we figure this out? So um, I really appreciate that. All right, thanks, Aaron. So how have you two adapted to each other's style so that your communication is effective? So let's talk about adaptations. And we'll start with you, Aaron, since you just finished. <laughs> All right. Uh, so um, uh, I think it's interesting. Uh, you know, even though she's right outside my office, um, I'm in meetings or taking calls, I would say, most of the daylight hours uh, in here. And I think that, um, you know, I think we we, we end up uh, doing a lot of email. If it's super urgent, there's uh, a text every now and again. Um, and sometimes it's not always easy for me to get face to face with her, but I think that we, she figures out what, how to get things to me and how to make things work. And I think that works out really well. Um, she also uh, understands if I'm in a meeting, you know, how, how do we work through these things or how do I get the information you need? Uh, I think the other part is, is that because I'm always, there isn't a whole lot of downtime, she is extremely efficient. If I send her something, uh, she will find it, she will make it, she will print it, uh, she will have all those things done. And I think that that's a, another one of those things where it's kind of interesting because, um, you know, I might have a, I know I have a different style than the other managers at, at the, at the disc or at Valley Water. And so I think that we've been able to understand um, you know, how that works and, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, uh, she's able to interpret my my short emails and texts and turn that around into something that's usable for me um, and move that meeting around or understand who that, you know, who, what I'm talking about and where things are going. Um, and I think we really developed a, a rapport where, where she's able to understand that and then almost anticipate, uh, you know, what's going on. I think that's the other great part that that actually is surprising and to me, it's 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 great. Uh, is when, um, you know, she understands that that something has moved or something else is going on, and she's already got a solution for it, and she's just texting me to let me know, hey, Aaron, we had to do this, we had to do that, you know, that we needed to move this, and we've got it all taken care of, and this is what it is, and then I don't worry about it. So I think that that is maybe that's the, the one of the bigger things is is it allows me I don't I don't have to worry about it because I know Debbie's on it. Okay. All right. All right, Debbie. Well, thank you. <laughs> My heart feels so full right now. <laughs> but, but but to echo off that, I think I think it's important because Aaron allows me that room too. He he. When I talked about trusting relationships earlier, um, it means so much to me that he puts that trust in me and allows me to just do it because um, if that he's comfortable enough to do that, I can find a way for him and I can make it happen as long as he he trusts my way. So um, I think that's how we can bounce really well off each other. I, I feel like we have found a good groove. Um, again, like Aaron said, a lot of it is emails. And so I have found a way to kind of, um, and I know we'll talk about this later, but find systems that help me kind of gather hot items together and put put them in front of him so he knows you know when he has a moment to, to get those done but I think I think it's just finding that groove with your leader just um, developing that relationship having trust in each other and, and knowing um, knowing how you work best and and 
I, I appreciate the trust that, that Aaron has put in me to, to help make him successful. All right. That's great. All right. Jimmy. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. A lot of what uh, Debbie and Aaron have already talked about, but also uh, Patricia and I, our communication styles are already very compatible as it is. So the adaptation period, if you will, was extremely short, if any. <laughs> and so uh, in addition, I think Aaron and Debbie touched on some of this. Th there's more than one way to talk to each other that like we have texting, we email each other, we'll call each other, you know, we'll walk right next door. So having those multiple uh, methods of being able to contact each other helps a lot, especially if I'm out of the office or she's out of the office or whatever the case uh, may be. And we do prioritize each other uh, because, you know, both of us, a lot of us do, you know, all of us do very important things in our roles, but specifically the relationship that we have with one another and our role to the board and to the staff, uh, we definitely make it a priority to be available to one another. So, uh, yeah, we, we've adapted very well. And <laughs> it sounds like it was an easy, quick adaptation. So, all right, Patricia. Yeah, I would definitely echo what Jimmy said. Um, for me, I had to adapt my communication style for my priority prior GM. And so once Jimmy came into the role, I'm like, oh, now I can be myself because that's the way I communicate is just like very quickly, let's get it done. Let's touch on this and at least get the ball rolling so that we can find a solution for whatever is coming up. Um, so luckily for me, it wasn't an adaptation. Uh, it was a, okay, now I can do what comes natural to me because that's his communication style as well. And um Another thing is, and that's something that I, I always still have to work on. I, when I got to the district uh, to start my internship, I had just turned 20. And so even now people kind of still treat me like I'm a baby, even though I'm like almost in my mid thirties. And so one thing that was maybe lacking for me was confidence to just, you know, like take ownership of what was given to me. I'd always kind of second guess and our prior GM really tried to instill that in me as well, where it's like, I trust you, you got this. Like if I'm giving it to you, like I know you're going to do the right thing. Um, and Jimmy definitely has carried that same attitude with me where it's like, I'm entrusting this to you. I'm asking you to come up with a solution and I trust you. So like grab it by the horns and, and do it. Um, and so that's one thing that I did have to adapt was my confidence and my skill set. Um, and so that's obviously grown with time. So I definitely encourage like young people or people who are new into the administrative field is um, you know, learn and be humble. And, but as you grow, like have confidence in yourself. And if someone's saying, Hey, I trust you to do this, um, take that as a compliment and, you know, take that on and just get it done. Uh, I was always second guessing myself. So that's something I definitely had to adapt, uh, over the years. Um, and I encourage the rest of you on the call to definitely do the same as to, you know, take ownership and say, yeah, I do got this and I know what I'm doing. I can take care of this. Thanks for sharing that, Patricia. All right, Valerie. Oh, it's going to be ditto what everyone else said. Um, I, Don and I think we're very similar from the get go, so there wasn't a lot of adaptation. Um, we and I wanted to just kind of maybe step back for the whole group and talking about like efficient communications and how we all email each other. Um, you know, I, I think. For those, you know, like everybody we've heard talking here is like, you, you have to know when you can be efficient. Like Don and I, I think we've talked about like, you know, I'm not going to waste your time sending you an email like, hi, Donna, how's your Monday morning? I hope you had a good weekend. I'm really looking forward to working with you this week. I need this. But that's not because, but instead just say like, you know, hey, Donna, I'd appreciate if you could do this for me. It's not because, you know, I'm uncaring or a cold person. I, I might be, but but it's because <laughs> we, we've, we've talked to each other that, you know, we'll we'll have time for the, the niceties and the personal touch at the right times. But, you know, sometimes during the day, if you're getting a million emails, you kind of want them to be short and to the point. So just I kind of wanted to say that because we're all talking about efficiency and quick emails, but um, I think we all know on this panel that, you know, that doesn't take away from taking the time to to have a more personal approach. So 
Um, but Don and I were, I think, very compatible about the efficiency and getting the job done. Um, and I've just, you know, let it be known, you know, my, you know, I don't say quirks or idiosyncrasies, but this is how I like my meetings scheduled. And, you know, this is what time I need in between them. And these are the times I'm unavailable. Um, and so um, whether Donna likes that or not, at least, you know, it's very clear. This is how I like my calendar managed. Um, so, you know, just the open communication. And then, you know, the more time we spend together, the even better we get at anticipating each other's needs and the board's need and the organization's needs. So um, uh, I think it's great. Thanks, Valerie. Thanks for sharing that. And Patricia, I mean, and Donna, I'm sorry. Um, hi, yeah, I feel the, the same way as Valerie, that we um, we just seem to be compatible and we're on the same page. And when I first um, started working for her, and you know, I had asked her how, you know, like, what is your communication style? And um, so when we do the email, it's like, I can't, I don't reply and say, you're welcome or thank you. And, and sometimes, you know, I don't like that because I want to have a little conversation going a little bit, but I know that, boom, please do this. Thanks. I appreciate it. And we just don't go back and forth and with that kind of little things and, and we make it work. Um, All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I just want to, I, I want to point out now that Donna is going to get like 20 thank you emails from me every day. <laughs> that's great that's great i'm sure she'll love that valerie uh i have a question for for you guys i hadn't planned on asking this but do you do any of you have a non-verbal non-technology communication it might be a facial expression a hand gesture or something? Do you use something like that where you just can kind of know and read um, and you got the message, but nothing was said? I, I, Debbie interpreted my, uh, or so I got some texts, a bunch of texts uh, uh, late yesterday on, on some things. And I actually just poked, I was on a call, I ran out and I gave a thumbs up and she understood what that was. She responded back to the other things and we got it all taken care of for, it was before this budget session we had last night. So um, I don't know if a thumbs up yeah, kind of no, work, that run, running yes. from one meeting to the to the bathroom, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so I, I guess that, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a great example. Anyone else? I think yeah. for, oh. Go ahead, Jimmy. Patricia, and I sometimes will hear things or, you know, be surprised at things or whatever the case may be, and we just end up looking at each other. <laughs> and that's all that's all that has to be done nothing said nothing else just look at each other and that's it <laughs> yeah i wanted to add that our first board meeting and luckily it was a test run uh right before we went back to in-person meetings as opposed to zoom board meetings jimmy and i did a test run in our boardroom to make sure, you know, the hybrid was set up and the Zoom was set up and that we could, everything would run smoothly for the first actual board meeting. And someone just happened to say something funny in the board meeting. And I laughed so hard that I cried. And I had to remember like, girl, you're not on Zoom anymore. You can't turn your camera off, like get it together. So I'm like, I'm trying to tighten it up with my facial expressions um, now that the board is sitting five feet away from me and not like um, on a Zoom camera where I can turn my camera off. So if anything, I need to like knock it off with the facial expressions because I'm very reactive and I wear my like face or what I'm thinking on my face. Um, so if anything, I need to cool it on the nonverbal communication. <laughs> okay, okay. It, Thanks for Robert, saying that, Patricia. Go ahead. Robert, I just wanted to, there was a nice question here from Janetta Johnson uh, to Patricia, especially since she just spoke. Um, she, Janetta just asked, um, what uh, adaptation and communication did you have to do with other GMs? Yeah, so our prior GM, um, like more similar to Aaron, where that poor man would try to make himself a toaster sandwich almost every day. And almost every day, it, at the end of the day, I'd have to throw it out of the oven because he, like he never got a chance to stop and eat that day. And that would happen a lot. Um, 
And so I think like the benefit now is that once people kind of went through COVID and said, hey, like, you know, Zooming and telephone calls are just as good as in-person, we can make things work. Uh, the amount of meetings just naturally went down from there. Uh, but for my prior GM, um, I definitely had to adapt my schedule, first of all, as well as just uh, how I would communicate. And I would sometimes be waiting, just waiting. I'm like, he's got to go to the bathroom at some point. So I'm just going to wait here. And when he goes, I'm going to pounce and be like, what do you want me to do about this? Um, especially on board meeting agenda days. And you all know how that goes the day that you need to submit your agenda to your board and to notice it to the public. Um, we'd be working well sometimes into 8, 9 p.m. just so that we could get things done because that's when he had the availability to do it. And so I would have to adapt and we, you know, I see him working hard, so I held nothing against him. Um, and I was said, hey, you know, if I'm working till eight till nine or eight or nine, I, you know, will take a half day the next day and I'll adapt my schedule and my communication style. So I really, um, because even email, sometimes he wouldn't be able to get to um, and not trying to knock him at all. Um, I don't know if anyone knows who our prior GM was, wonderful general manager, wonderful person, but just so busy um, that I really had to be strategic. And sometimes like Martha is laughing in the chat. I, I did, I'd have to wait here and pounce. And I'm like, I'm not going to go to the bathroom because if he gets out for two minutes and I'm not here, I'm going to be so mad at myself. Um, so just that's that's the way I would have to adapt. Um, and yeah, it would have to be verbal because sometimes like his inbox would be so full um, that I knew he wouldn't be able to get to it by the time I needed it to be done. Thank you so much, Patricia. Appreciate that. All right. Thanks, everyone. Let's move forward. Uh, question eight, how frequently are you communicating and or meeting? And we'll start with you, Donna. Uh, that would be daily. Um, absolutely. And I want to say Monday through Friday. It's usually mostly Monday through Friday, actually. Um, and that's email, in person, on the phone, in passing. Um, and then occasional are one on one meetings. Um, but definitely we are communicating daily. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, same for us as well, definitely daily, sometimes multiple times a day. The day that I'm sending out the agenda and publishing the agenda, I feel like it's like a hundred times that day um, because there's so many items flying around and so many things that need review and double checking and making sure everything looks good. Uh, so it depends on the day, but um, definitely daily. And I'll echo what Donna said as well. It is mostly Monday through Friday and it's mostly 8 to 5 p.m. Um, our board used to be the same five people for 20 years. They were all retired and Oraloma was like the only thing that they kind of had going on. Um, so it was much easier to get things done from eight to 5 PM. We have a new board who still prioritizes Oraloma, but they're working, they're serving on other, um, maybe city council or maybe serving on other uh, agency commissions or things like that. They're very, very busy. And so I've had to learn to, you know, um, maybe expect more PM emails, Saturday, Sunday emails when they can get to it. Um, and the expectation from Oraloma was never like, oh, you must respond at all times. But that's like the decision I made um, as an executive assistant to make myself available to the board and to the GM at all times. Um, and that's like I touched on before. It's just one small way to get kind of cookie points and brownie points with your board is yeah, maybe they're emailing me on a Saturday and not expecting a response, but I'm going to give it to them anyway and help them as fast and uh, as I can. And sometimes I don't get to it till Monday and it is what it is. Um, but I, that is one thing that I've had to learn. I haven't had to adapt for the GM. I have had to adapt to the board um, as the board changes and their needs and communication style changes as well. Okay, thank you. All right, Debbie. Oh, echoing, echoing the ladies here. Yeah, we, we meet formally. We try to meet formally um, once a week, more if the need arises. You know, we'll have a face-to-face one-on-one if we can. Um, and again, informally, it's all day, every day. We, you know, whether it's through email, text, or just a pop in the office here, or he pops out of the office. Aaron's great, though. He... <laughs> 
we all love it around here. Um, not just me, but the other EAs, because he will come bouncing in in the morning, you know, hi to everybody. And he'll, he'll make sure he, he acknowledges us and, and, and gives me a chance to check in. And it's, it's actually really refreshing and nice. It's a great way to start the day. So, um, but yeah, all day, every day is, is the communication is flowing. All right. Thanks. What systems, uh, software programs, et cetera, and uh, processes, methods, emails, shared project plans, et cetera, you guys mentioned some of this already. What systems do you use to stay aligned? And maybe there's some you haven't mentioned yet that you can add. And we'll start with Debbie. Okay. Um, well, obviously, as I said, I primarily use Outlook and email and Excel, um, more specifically, since Aaron's schedule is really impacted. Um, I keep items flagged in my uh, in my email and inbox, and that automatically creates a task list and to do list for me, which is fantastic. Um, so I can actually go through there and, and clean up and make sure things are on track. Um, and as a backup for really crucial items that I know are coming up, I can I can actually put an alarm on that flag and a reminder on my calendar just to, to keep me um, just to keep me apprised if that's coming up. Sometimes I'll even give myself a reminder of the reminder just to prepare myself. Um, also, I just keep a simple Excel spreadsheet with things, items like signatures or board member memos or correspondence that are that's coming up because sometimes we have a lot of them at once and then some become really a lot more urgent than others. And then I can utilize these lists and utilize these emails. And I'll, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll put it together in a bulleted list for Aaron and send it right to him so he knows what's hot um, or else I'll you know, for or put things at the top of his inbox so that he and he's really great about prioritizing my emails. If he sees something come through, he gives that attention because he knows it's something that he needs to see. So um, I would say my biggest forms of um, of systems is is Outlook, email, and um, just Excel and and texting and things like that, just to to keep everything organized. All right. Donna. Um, yeah, that's that's what I jotted down here was the same thing. Um, we use the Microsoft Office 365 suite and um, Outlook is uh, always open for me. Uh, there's always emails and calendar things going on. Um, and like Debbie said, that uh, using tasks and assigning due dates. Um, and pop-up reminders on the daily of what needs to be done um, is very helpful. So yeah, Outlook is uh, what we use to stay aligned. All right, thanks, Donna. Patricia? I have nothing to add to this one. That's exactly what we do is Outlook, emails, tasks. Tasks are especially helpful. And um, I get them from you know uh, the supervisory team, and I also if there's things that are recurring every year, like for instance, I have one for next week saying find out which board members want to go to the CASA conference. You know, send out a poll and see who'd like to attend, and that's on my you know tasks for every year so that I never forget, and that every year I can remember to reach out to them about that. Uh, so those are the the things we utilize. All right. I have a question and um, here for everyone. What is one piece of advice you would give to someone taking your position for the first time? And uh, we'll start with you, Valerie. I hadn't had a chance to clarify this question with you before. This is not being a general manager of a water agency for the first time. It's being an executive with an executive assistant for the first time, correct? Either way. Okay. <laughs> um, well, if you want to be the general manager of a water agency, uh, one of the first pieces of advice I'd give you is, you know, board management is a, is a key skill. You know, it's not just the, uh, the, the technical skills, but it's, you know, being able to work with your board. But as far as, you know, you've been promoted and you're an executive and you're going to have an executive assistant for the first time, a few things. Um, one is, um, you know, I would be 
open and transparent about what I thought I needed and wanted and how I wanted to be supported. But I'd also ask, you know, if this executive assistant's been doing it before, it's like, well, you know, how do you support an executive and, and what can I expect from you and what suggestions do you have for this relationship to work? Um, so it is really open communication, you know, it's, it's being transparent. Um, you know, working with an executive assistant, I'm pretty uh, open about, you know, how I like things to be and what, what my needs are and, you know, what, you know, um, you know, little things bug me, um, you know, pet peeves, so to speak. But then also I'd like to ask questions. Um, you know, there's, there's things that might be at pet peeves for the executive assistant. Um, and there's like for me, you know, if you want to text me or if you want to email me, it doesn't matter to me. I'm open either way, but you know, if the executive assistant prefers texting or emails, then I can be adaptable. So I, I think the, the transparency and communications go both ways. Um, and I guess this is more than one piece of advice, but the other thing is, you know, make sure to take time to be, you know, personal, you know, ask how someone's weekend was, ask about the kids, you know, share a little bit of yourself because we all work hard. You you heard that from everyone here and it's kind of constant day to day, but, um, you know, take time to appreciate people as people, not just focused on the work tasks. Sounds good, Valerie. Thank you. Aaron? All right. Well, actually, yeah, Dean off of, uh, I guess what Valerie said also is, yeah, have a little fun, uh, but uh, I guess don't get fired. So, um, <laughs> no, uh, uh, I think one of the things would be, and I guess I'll go back to, I guess, being first or having an, uh, an assistant for the first time or looking at some of those things is also, um, you know, working and, and letting go, uh, you know, part of me, uh, you know, at first was like, oh, you know, I, you know, I want to move this or I want to do that or I want to get this and it might be easier for me to do it myself. But it, it turns out that after a while we develop a rapport and Debbie's already understood what I want to do and how I want to move it. And, and, you know, to move this, it takes three other steps to move all those other things. And I think that that's a, you know, one of those things that you, you also want to want to do is, 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 is understand, and then after a while, we've developed a trust where you know, uh, carte blanche on my calendar to let let it, let it ride, right? So, um, you know, I know that she's got it under control. So, I think that's uh, you know, one of the one of the things that uh, you know, develop that trust and 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 work together. And uh, you know, I'm always impressed with how well or how much uh, Debbie can take care of and and anticipate and, and and move forward. So, I think that that's another one of those things where you know, make sure you can. Uh, you know, work, develop that relationship. And, and I think, um, you know, you, you'd be surprised at how, how much, how much uh, an administrative assistant, executive assistant can, can really help you. And, and I couldn't do my job without him. So. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Aaron. Jimmy. Yeah, it's hard to uh, narrow it down to just one piece of advice. So I'll, I'll just put on top of what Aaron and Valerie said, is uh, be open to listening because ultimately we can't, as, as leaders and executives, we can't do our job without the staff, right? Without them, I mean, I can't do it all. So I'm always willing and open to listening to them and support them. I ask the question, how can I help you so that you can help me as well? So it's always a, a two-way street there, uh, but that I think is very important um, have some humility, you know, this kind of touches on having some fun and not, I don't always have to be right. Uh, and then, you know, try to help provide solutions. And uh, lastly, we already touched on this about having multiple communication styles that helps with being able to connect with different staff with different levels of communication and different ideas and different uh, ways to communicate and of course learning how to work with your board and that kind of ties into taking the position of the GM not necessarily the uh, working with your uh, admin assistant or admin executive assistant so yeah everything very important and really just having a, a personal a human touch with your staff human touch with your assistant uh, it's it, it is work but we also have lives Thanks, Jimmy. Donna. Yeah, this one was uh, really hard because just giving one piece of advice is, that's tough. Um, 
So it's not going to be one. I'm going to have to answer with a couple. All right, um, all right. that's fine. Be prepared to um, don't think it's going to be an eight to five job. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? That's one. Um, and be um, be dependable. Love what you do. Um, be trustworthy and just and be able to have good rapport with everyone in the building, from the GM to the board to the maintenance janitorial staff. Um, just be personable. Have fun. Love what you do. That's more than one. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. Huh? That's fine. Thank you, Debbie. I agree. I think I have more than one too, but just building off what Donna said, because I had that jotted down is, is having a really good relationship with, with um, not just your leader, but everybody around. And, and especially to one piece of advice I have is, is to have a really good working relationship with your other administrative professionals, because if you can work well together, you know, it's so much better for the organization because you know, when you can bounce ideas off each other, also when you, when each one of them can give you heads up on what's going on in their areas or, or from the, the CEO, general manager from the board, we can all work together and then we can prepare our leaders for, for what's coming. So, you know, having just a good relationship with everybody and especially your other admin professionals, um, I think another real big key to this um, to this career is being flexible. You may come to work and you have you know your to do list and you you have your thing you know your your plan for the day ready to go. Just toss it aside because you got to be ready to pivot. Things change constantly, um, and you just got to be prepared. Um, you know, I think over time I've learned to just let it go and go with the flow and. The more I do that, the easier it is to just adapt and you can just just keep on going. And I think just keeping a calm and positive attitude, a good sense of humor, having, you know, that relationship. And then um, my my biggest secret is keeping a stash of an emergency chocolate. And I think that, <laughs> that's, that's my final advice. <laughs> I like that. I like that. All right, Patricia. Debbie, that's so funny that you said that because I have like right next to my desk, my emotional support cookies <laughs> it's like, it's throughout the day. Maybe also because I'm like eight months pregnant is the other reason why. But um, yeah, that's a great piece of advice for me. One of the things that I feel like I kind of just naturally do in my relationships in life. And I've definitely, you know, um, made that a priority here, like to the board, to the management team, to any staff is to try to anticipate the, the needs of the district, anticipate the needs of the board, um, and look ahead as much as you can so that um, you're offering solutions before you, people even maybe realize that there's a problem or a need, um, and that can make you really, really valuable to your organization. Um, and so I do think that's something that's like great to do. Memorize calendars, like go look at your board's calendars, go memorize your GM's calendars or as many as you can kind of retain. Um, it's good to know what's going on at all times and looking ahead. Um, so that's definitely the things I would say the most. And also just to be adaptable to your board and as the needs of your board changes or your actual board members change, um, you know, it's always kind of like, you know, um, making a new friend or, or starting a new relationship, even with the board is like, you have to get to know them. What is their communication style? Uh, what are they about? What are the things they like to talk about? Maybe the things they don't like to talk about and really learning them as an individual so that you can best meet, meet their needs as a board member. Um, so, and that's probably the, the things I would, I would say are the most important. Um, and just to find ways to stay organized um, and positive, even when things start kind of coming down and it seems like, you know, and we all ebb and flow where sometimes a week can be so overwhelming and you feel like you're just on Friday, you're like, I am beyond exhausted. And other times you're, you know, like that was a good week. Things flowed. It wasn't too crazy. Um, it goes a long way to be positive. And people at Oraloma joke and say that I used to work at Chick-fil-A because anytime anyone asks me for a favor, I always say my pleasure or uh, when they, you know, thank you for helping me with that. My pleasure. It's always my pleasure. And they're always calling me a Chick-fil-A worker because I, that's what they say there. Um, but it goes a long way. And anytime I've needed help from anybody else in any other department, um, there's not one time where even if I'm bringing in a box of donuts, like five guys will run out to help me so I don't have to lift a finger. Um, or if I'm pulling up with lunch or if I'm, you know, need help setting up a, a room, um, 
for an event or for a board meeting, as soon as people see that I'm trying to get something done, people run out to help me. And I feel like that's because I always go out of my way to help them. And it really goes a long way to create goodwill amongst your staff and um, with your superiors and with your peers. So that's the the things I would say for, for myself. Thanks, Patricia. Uh, Chad, do we have a question in the chat? We do. Uh, we had a question from earlier. Um, and this one is from uh, Leslie Richardson. Um, and uh, she asked, how do you personally and the company show appreciation to staff? Anyone can answer that as you choose. I'll, I can jump in on that. So since I've taken this position or assumed this role, um, I make my rounds around the district. So I almost every day, if not a couple of times a week, I walk around the district, I go through all the departments and I talk to staff face to face, say, hi, how are you doing? How's your day looking? Do you need help with anything? Just that personal touch with staff. And like I said, it's a little easier here because we're smaller. Um, I, I know agencies with a thousand employees might be a little tougher, but at least you have some human or some touch with the staff that you do talk to more often than not. And then we also here established a social committee. So we try to have, and Patricia actually runs that. I, I entrusted her with, with that project slash task. And we try to have monthly gatherings with all the staff. We'll bring in lunch or something simple just to show appreciation that, hey, let's take a one hour break, get together and just be able to be next to the guy in the other department that you don't see every day and have, have a dialogue. So that's how we show our appreciation to, to staff. Thanks, Jimmy. Anyone else? I just yeah. want to add, sorry, that when Jimmy established that social committee, he made it very clear that it was because he is prioritizing the staff and showing appreciation to staff. So it wasn't like, hey, we're just doing this monthly gatherings. He made it clear. He's like, this is something that I, as a GM, want to prioritize in showing staff appreciation. It's something it's as simple as we have a plan just to go out and walk along the shoreline that we, our plant sits along and pick up trash together and then have lunch afterwards. So it could be something that costs very little money. Um, other times, you know, we have, you know, rented a air hockey table for an hour so that we can have an air hockey competition, or we had a cornhole competition with all staff and we gave out, uh, you know, the winner got a, a $50 gift card and we just have fun together. But I did want to add that Jimmy made it clear the development of that program or that committee was in order to show staff appreciation, which uh, went a really long way for employee morale here. That's that great. Was it. Valerie? Yeah, um, some similar items. Um, I do try to, you know, walk around the building and, you know, say good morning to everyone um, when I have the chance um, and then try to get out to our, our field facilities, um, you know, on a somewhat regular basis so I can spend some time there. Um, you know, so just being available and talking to people, saying good morning, asking how people's weekends were. Um, we do all employees events. We have small employee meetings um, where we feed employees well, thanks to Donna. Donna is like the most revered person in the agency um, because <laughs> of the great breakfast we had at our uh, last all employees meeting. And, and I'm not exaggerating. Um, and then we do two um, kind of employee appreciation events um, off site. Um, and then, you know, I really do try to say thank you to people um, for, you know, Jobs well done, um, but not just say it all the time where it becomes routine. So like, I don't think Don after every board meeting because we have a board meeting every month, right? It would just be a little probably trite, but you know, when we first went to Zoom board meetings, you know, what a big, you know, hill to climb, right? It's like, thank you, Donna, that was awesome. Um, and then we just recently went through an appointed director process. So doing the applications, the special logistics for board meetings, you know, like, thank you for a great board meeting. Um, you know, so when staff make presentations um, at board meetings, we had a, um, a what we call a, a liaison committee meeting um, Tuesday. And so it's a couple of elected officials from the various cities and water agencies 
you know, one of my employees made a presentation there where she did a great job, which um, I was planning on thanking her anyways, but then public works director from another city, you know, complimented me on that. So I made sure to share that. So, you know, just taking the time to appreciate, you know, when, you know, people, you know, make presentations or take on hard projects, um, but not to the point where it's just seen as routine. I, I once worked for a boss that uh, just every time anybody did anything, they'd get like a yellow little sticky note on a report saying, good job. And it got to be a little bit tiresome. Um, people are like, oh, great, not another yellow sticky. So, you know, <laughs> finding the right balance. Thanks, Valerie. Go ahead, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, and so much like, uh, I guess, like Valerie or, or others, I, I do I do like to get out to the plants I, or to our facilities. It's um, we have quite a few facilities. And so it's uh, it's always a little bit difficult. It's always something that I that I really want to do more. of. I, I want to start with, you know, I, you know, I have an excellent staff and we we they work. They, they do everything and they work so well, I, I, you know, and, and I wish I could show show more. Um, I do try to one of the things is that we do we have quite a few programs for employee recognition and and all employee meetings. The pandemic kind of slowed us down a little bit. Uh, we did a more a little more virtual uh, and and some other things there, but hopefully we'll transition back into uh, some of these um, you know larger events together. Um, you know, getting the whole water utility together. One of the other things I do try to kind of also do is that there's always you know in in any utility, there's always something going on, and there's always something out there. So. If there was a leak or something else, or somebody had to work on the weekends or other things like that, I do try to sneak out there and, you know, and 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 uh, thank everybody for for at, you know doing such a great job, um, you know, because uh, you know the job. A lot of times the job has a, a bunch of standard stuff, but then there's always you know every day there's there or every week there's always something a little more. And so I'll I'll try to you know at least get out to the field and and you know see what's going on and, and try to help out and, and you know in any way I can. So. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, um, couldn't do anything without the excellent staff. And uh, I hope to actually uh, post pandemic, hopefully have a, a couple of more in person things, um, you know, as, as we move forward. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, Chad, any other questions? Yeah, got one other question. Um, what trainings do the executive assistants take to make their work more efficient? I try to take advantage of any uh, Microsoft Office uh, trainings or or trainings that um, Valley Water offers on any of the software or, or programs we use. But even though I really have a whole lot of, I'm very comfortable with Microsoft Office, it doesn't hurt to always take some training because you might pick up something you didn't know or there might be something new. So I think that helps me. Um, and yeah, yeah, just, just taking advantage of anything I can find, especially with things that I use on the daily. Um, and also just, um, I think talking, like I said, the relationship with your other admin professionals, bouncing ideas off each other, because I use things that they might not use, but they use things or, or do things in a way that I hadn't thought of. And I go, oh my gosh, I could be saving a lot of time. So, so it's really good to network that way as well. For me, um, our HR department will have occasional uh, trainings on um, becoming a new supervisor or some of the kind of training that they may offer. So we um, attend those. And um, if, if there's not time or money in the budget for other kinds of trainings, honestly, I will go to YouTube and get some training on my own uh, <laughs> if there's something new I wanted to learn. That's good, Donna. Thank you. Yeah, and another thing I'll add, I similar to to Debbie and to to Donna, you find little things on Microsoft Suite or on on YouTube. Like, uh, you just educate yourself. Like Google takes you so far. Um, but one piece of advice is like, I I feel like Microsoft Excel. Like, I think I, even if I take a thousand classes, like there is so much that you can do in Excel that you don't even know. Um, so cozy up to your finance department because those people will know Excel like the back of their hand. And there's been times where they're like, why do you do that this way? You can easily use this function to do it in five seconds. And I'm like, oh, well, that was so helpful. So yeah, mosey up to your finance people because those those people will definitely know um, all the tricks and secrets of Excel to make it super efficient. Um, and they've helped me a lot. Thanks, Patricia. 
All right. Anything else, Chad? Yeah, uh, we we do have a couple more questions. I also am aware that you know, um, I think there's some prizes that you'd mentioned, so I don't want to shut cut that short. Um, but um, you know, I'll go ahead and uh, proceed with the next uh, question, and then we'll see where we are at that point. But the next question was, how do you establish a work life balance if you're expected to be available off off of work hours? Uh, I'll, I'll start a little bit, I guess, about expectations, right? And I think that it ebbs and flows. And, and you know, even even if I'm, you know, if I'm here till, you know, if I get in and it's dark and uh, I leave and it's dark, I'm I'm not not necessarily expecting that Debbie's gonna gonna be there. I think we communicate as we move forward. I think there are key times when um, things are coming together, when there's certain, uh, you know, budget issues or there's certain other things coming on or there's certain travel details that that that, that need to happen. Uh, but I definitely, you know, we've got to have a work-life balance, right? I mean, you know, uh, otherwise we'll we'll, uh, we'll completely burn out. So I think we've, uh, Debbie and I have, have have come up with a, a you know a good situation where we, you know, we, we talk about the calendar a lot, and and I think we can expect that, you know, if this is running late and I need something, then then we'll talk about it. Or if I'm traveling somewhere and it's going to be weekend travel and there's some some other thing that needs to happen, or um, there's uh, you know some other, you know. Uh, a board CEO request or something like that. Uh, if if it's if it's something that we have to have to take care of, we'll we'll talk about where that is. But also the understanding that that you know she has her own life and she's got things that she needs to take care of, and we'll work together to you know she's always very flexible, and we we work together to make it work. So work life balance is very important. Uh, otherwise, we're you know just going to you know completely burn out. Um, and we just work together to understand you know when when there is times that we'll need to to figure that out. I'd like to add to that. Uh, thanks, Aaron. We do, we manage our own time and you have to be disciplined in doing so. For us, a priority is to, well, for, for a lot of you guys, but especially for us, uh, we manage around the board calendar. So the board meetings and all the committee meetings. And I say that because we have two board meetings a month, one board workshop and five committee meetings a month. So everything revolves around those eight meetings per month. So outside of that, uh, the staff, especially Patricia and everyone else that, that works here uh, has the flexibility to work you know, outside of that. So on board meeting days, I'm here for 14 hours, but so are some of the staff. But on other days, flex your time. You know, there's no meetings that day, go ahead and take some time off or flex it so that you're, you have a very balanced work-life schedule. Thanks, Jimmy. Yeah, and um, similar um, comments is, yeah, the, the types of jobs we have, there are times when we need to be available off hours, um, but as a manager, try to recognize to, to make sure staff do take the time for their work-life balance. Um, you know, I may be working on a weekend. I may be thinking about five things I need to ask other employees for, but I'll write notes and I'll wait and send those on Monday because, you know, I don't necessarily want to bother them on the weekends. Um, and as Jimmy said, life revolves around the board, you know, packet and board meeting uh, cycle. Um, and, you know, the technology, it, it, it hurts and it helps. Like it hurts in the fact that you're available 24 seven, but it also helps that like, you know, I can take a day off, um, and knowing that, you know, I can, these three things I have to respond to, I can do three 10 minute emails in that day. So, you know, just trying to recognize that both for yourself, but for your employees. And, um, you know, if you're expecting people to work the extra hours, it's for a reason, not just, you know, a control freak type of thing. You know, it's, you know, this is a busy time. I appreciate you working late and on the weekend, not just because, I want to make your life miserable. So just recognizing that and working around it. Thanks, Valerie. Uh, All right. Was, oh, sorry. No, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Patricia. Go ahead. I was just going to say, as an assistant, make sure you communicate beforehand. Like, because for me, if they said, no, you know, you can't flex your time on a board meeting day, our board meetings start at 5 p.m. If they said, hey, you know, I, I come in at 11 those days because I'm usually here till seven or eight. 
but that was something that needed to be communicated beforehand. So the best way to handle and make sure you have a work-life balance is to make sure like beforehand you understand what the expectations are. Because for me as well, um, if I do have a 14 hour day or if I do have a 10 hour day, um, I know that it's within my rights and it's okay with Jimmy that on Friday, I'm going to work three hours and then I'm done for that day. Um, because I put in my 40 hours already by that point, or, um, if needed, you know, over time. Um, but that's one thing I would encourage like assistants to do is make sure that you understand the expectations and how much flexibility you have before you kind of set your standards and your expectations and your schedule for yourself, um, to make sure that it's like, you're on the same page and you're not jumping the gun on that. Great. Thank you. Oh, sorry about that. And so uh, we want to, uh, uh, this has been great. We want to thank um, our panelists for candidly sharing their knowledge and experience and our audience. Uh, thank you for joining us today. As a reminder, um, there is a link in the in the chat uh, for a quick survey. We really want to get your responses. And you also, we're going to send this out via email. And when you log off, you also will be requested or prompted to complete the, the survey as well. And I mentioned earlier that we have um, 10 prizes we're going to be giving out. Um, those who are selected for the prize, we will notify you. And from there, you can communicate with us how you would want to obtain the physical prizes. Um, two of the prizes are for a, a online uh, conference that you'll be able to attend. But we'll be giving those out and getting those to you. Uh, so remember, the recording of this session will be posted on Bayworth's website, baywork.org, in a few weeks. And we want to thank you for being with us today. I do want to give our panelists uh, opportunity to share any final comments before we close. Thank you for having us today. Thanks, Debbie. Yeah, I can just say thank you again, Robert and everyone else for having us here. I, uh, <laughs> we can't do our job without the support of all our admins. So thank you. Yeah, ditto. Thank you. Um, and again, we need the support. And I've always said the most important person in the organization is the general manager's executive assistant. Yes. And thank you all. Uh, happy Administrative Professionals Week. And, and Robert, I just also want to just call out um, other members of the planning group uh, that were involved in this. Of course, uh, Robert. Let, let's let Patricia comment. She was about to Oh, comment. okay. Sorry. I was just going to say for the GMs and the executives, uh, make sure you buy your assistant's lunch today. <laughs> Jimmy's <laughs> buying us lunch after this webinar is wrapped up. <laughs> Aaron took care of that yesterday. All right, go ahead, Jack. Yeah, I was just going to call out, um, of course, Robert um, and Elizabeth uh, Toops uh, with Baywork uh, were involved in putting this together, but also Suzanne Dalbo. Uh, Don Benson and Diane Saleno, um, Saleno uh, were uh, uh, key contributors to this event. Um, it's, it's great to see the attendance here. I just want to recognize that. And of course, the panelists for taking the time um, to, to, to share uh, all your experiences. So I just wanted to, um, to just show that gratitude uh, for all of you uh, and recognize you for your efforts today. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks, Chad. And so thanks, everyone, for being with us today. Again, please complete the survey. We really want to hear from you and be on the lookout for the recording that will be on our website um, in the next few weeks and be on the lookout for any Baywork events. And we're trying to really advance our workforce because we believe that there's no operational reliability without workforce reliability. And we look forward to seeing you again at another Baywork event and take care and have a good rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, and complete the survey if you can. There's a survey going around that Elizabeth just sent out. So uh, complete the survey. Um, but thank you again for attending. Bye, everyone. <laughs>